Covering more than two-thirds of our planet, the ocean is fundamental to human well-being across the globe. It is the foundation of life on Earth. It regulates our climate, absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. It supports vital complex ecosystems, including coral reefs, mangroves, seagrasses and salt marshes, all of which play a role in preserving and protecting humanity. Driven by a growing global population and the need for new sources of economic growth, the ocean is becoming an ever more powerful economic frontier. The ocean's increasing contribution is of between 3 and 5 percent of all economic activity across energy, tourism, food, manufacturing, biotechnology, transport, minerals and communications. It feeds more than a billion people, and for many countries, it's the main source of fresh water via desalination. At the same time, the ocean also holds the key to a zero-carbon future through renewable energy. In some parts of the world, ocean space is the largest natural asset, and that includes our home, the Caribbean. The large ocean states of the OECS have much more ocean than land and thus we need to recognize and take up the tremendous opportunities that our ocean resources can deliver to all our citizens if we plan, manage and care for them in a sustainable and responsive way. There are many simple things that we can change locally to improve the quality of the marine environment and tackle the impacts of global climate change. The Caribbean Regional Oceanscape Project Crop will create the foundation that we need to develop a blue economy that will benefit each and every one of us and generations to come. We may be small island developing states, but we are also unequivocally large ocean developing states. We are a lot bigger than we think we are. To ignore our vast seascape and its tremendous potential is developmental malpractice. We must cast our eyes outward and recognize that the beach or the coastline is not the edge of our world, but the beginning of an immense untapped resource that can sustainably fuel growth and development. The term blue economy means different things to different people. For some, it is the optimized exploitation of all marine resources. For others, it is centered on conservation, preservation, and clean energy. In the Caribbean context, others still see the blue economy as an extension of our region's competitive advantage in tourism and focus on the various ways in which we can monetize the ocean for our visitors. I would suggest that we conceptualize the blue economy as encompassing the full range of economic sectors and policies that determine whether the use of our marine resources are one, socially and economically beneficial, two, sustainable and environmentally responsible, three, locally controlled, and that's, that's a very important one, and four, people-centered. We are large. We contain multitudes. At a time when fiscal and policy space is becoming tighter, when disasters and pandemics further constrain our possible developmental paths to an externally mandated Hobson's choice, the renewed focus on our seascape is a welcome breath of fresh air, an opportunity to think big and to see development possibilities beyond the confines of our landmass. It is an opportunity to, to be big, We do have this cultural belief that everything that goes into the ocean washes away and that the sea takes it away. It can't cope with the amount of, of pollutants and so on that we are putting in. 
So I love the ocean for all it can give us and all of that we can see in it, but I really want us to take better care of it. I would like to see something more constructive done in terms of protect what we have, so that not only me, but the future generation could you know, live by it as well. Some people, they just throw anything inside the ocean, so yeah, it could be damaged like that, but I try to refrain from doing that. It's just a place where I come to clear my head when I feel stressed, so anytime, yeah. So yeah, I like the ocean a lot. We pick up trash pretty often, really. Just to encourage the guests not to litter, you know? So they actually help us as well. Ocean means a lot to me, like the world to me. I love it. Every day, if I get a chance to go, every day I go. I never say no. I just love it. Where we see employment opportunities for families and for young people, we also have to be able to mitigate against, for example, what a project that is heavily focused on construction can do to our mangroves if the trucks are dumping waste in our mangroves. So all of these systems are interlinked and we have to take a multi-sectoral and a public-private partnership approach to managing them so that we don't lose the economic opportunities, but at the same time, we don't damage the environment. Our communities need a new way of thinking and our governments need a new set of policy objectives to bring about a more rapid move towards sustainability. What we should be working towards is a blue economy. The blue economy is not about just making money out of a particular sector, but making that money go back into the protection of that sector so we can make, but at the same time, we can put back to create that balance. We work a lot with communities, car restoration, environment, as well as um, livelihood uh, enhancing opportunities um, with communities. Uh, this is where uh, I think the most important bit of um, blue economy actually falls. It is necessary that we all take part in the process, not only for current generations, but for future generations, which is in fact our vision and aspiration for the OECS. The blue economy concept is part of a new wave of economic thought that emphasizes the sustainable use of natural resources in the world's oceans, seas, and coastal areas. In a blue economy, economic activities must be balanced with environmental and social priorities to promote a sustainable, healthy ocean that can benefit not only the people using it, but all those living in the OECS region. As well as sound science, a blue economy must be grounded in principles of social inclusion, the perspectives and needs of low-income groups, women, youth, local communities, and groups that have been traditionally marginalized or underrepresented will all be foregrounded. Strategies will also prioritize training that helps our young people take advantage of highly skilled blue economy job opportunities. Further, we must be ever mindful of the interplay between actions on land, in coastal areas, and in the marine environment, and their benefits and adverse impacts. The OECS member states have undertaken to marry green approaches on land and in coastal areas with blue approaches in the coastal and marine areas within an integrated, sustainable island system management framework. We need to recognize that while not all economic activities in the ocean rely on our ecological systems, all have the potential to degrade them. The negative impact of economic activities on our ecosystems must be minimized. If not, the health of ecosystems will decline, putting our jobs and economic growth at risk. Here you have a natural resource where if we use sustainably, we can create employment and the economy can benefit out of it. We're inseparable with the ocean. So therefore what happens there directly impacts our, our existence. It's critical therefore that we have systems in place to manage it, to take care of it, to nurture it, to husband it, uh, that if, so that we can in fact live in our families and our future generations can, can have a life that is, that is comfortable and meaningful. We have to learn to keep our country clean because cleanliness is next to godliness and different things like that. So it's very important that we do these things.
Without improved management of our natural capital, the OECS stands to lose its economic backbone, a vibrant, healthy ocean that provides food and income for our people. However, there is great potential for our ocean resources to support the re-engineering of economic growth and development while balancing the health and wealth of our ocean. We must measure and understand the economic activity that is tied to our natural capital so that we can grow our economies in a sustainable way. of this natural capital is being changed by human-driven trends occurring under the rise of global greenhouse gas emissions and emerging impacts such as climate change, ocean acidification, and higher sea surface temperatures. Marine pollution is ubiquitous in our waters. It poses a serious threat to our ecosystems and the blue economy. Agricultural runoff and untreated sewage have done major damage. An estimated 85% of wastewater entering the Caribbean Sea is untreated, and these flows deliver excess nutrients to algae, which overgrow and suffocate other life forms to create dead zones. The OECS coastal population has grown over the decades, placing pressure on coastal areas. Moreover, tourists come to our region largely for sea-related attractions, resulting in the mass construction of waterside resorts, marinas, and other visitor facilities. The increase in development of our coastlines has placed tremendous pressure on our ecosystems as developers bid to gain better access to the sea. About 75% of the region's reefs are considered to be at risk from human activity, and many of the mangrove forests that once lined our coasts have already been devastated. Poor land use practices, unsustainable fishing practices, and the degradation of our coral reefs are threatening the survival of many of our marine species. The decline in the health of our marine natural capital can stop sectors and industries from reaching their full potential. Therefore, at this stage, we must ask ourselves, how can we build a sustainable future for current and future generations of OECS citizens, where our economies and our livelihoods are safeguarded and our natural capital is protected and thriving? The ECROP is a document which was approved by the OECS authority, that's the heads of government, in 2013. It is the international best practice for regional cooperation on matters pertaining to oceans. It seeks to deliver in the areas of economic, environmental, and social sustainability. We have stakeholders who are governmental, non-governmental, stakeholders who are from the community, from academia, who all participate in the process of governance. It is possible then to have all of the views and all of the stakeholder interests addressed in an integrated manner. Each ministry has its own mandate. So in order to achieve all this, the ministries, the agencies will certainly have to work collaboratively because it takes two hands to clap. That's a very delicate balance that involves active engagement constantly from um, professional practitioners, students, young people, entrepreneurs, private sector, public sector, everybody, every day has to get behind this effort. The ocean means a lot to us, not just for me, but to us. We should not be dumping rubbish at any sites which will lead directly to the ocean. And the fishes that we eat from the oceans also feeds on this and also is going to get back to us as the people who consume the fishes that we get from the ocean. Marine spatial plans help us to reach agreement and to navigate the way forward. The OECS is calling on all citizens, including indigenous communities, to be a part of the process and help with the sustainable management and preservation of our marine assets and to enable socially equitable blue growth. Only by working together can we secure a sustainable future for our oceans, our nations and our people.